Welcome to the Whiskey Vault. I'm Rex. I'm Daniel. This is Kentucky Spirit Single Barrel. Oh, it's a wild turkey thing. It's a single barrel release of wild turkey. Okay. Renita Rivas. Oh, Renita Rivas, you magnificent bastard. She comes by the distillery. Yes. I recognize. Now you. I will tell you, you're gonna start to see mixes of like somebody who donated something last week, right next to somebody who donated something still last year. Just because we've gotten to some of the donations from January does not mean we're done with last year. Okay. It just means that we need to be pouring less obscure whiskeys. We finally got to the point where there's not a single choice of an old whiskey okay. that's not a completely obscure. Okay. All right. We still had some that were like. Middle of the road, right. and we could pull it off, but right. we don't even have that anymore. That's the flaw in the uh, the vault content game plan. Hey, let's go through all the whiskeys in the vault. Then you go through all the ones that people can get their hands on, and wow, now let's talk about things that you never heard of. Now this is Single Barrel by Jimmy Russell and Eddie Russell. Okay. Remember, we always have liked the wild turkey. Yeah. Uh, well, and and, uh, and <laughs> I need to stop being surprised. But I keep getting surprised. I keep telling myself, oh, wild turkey is quite nice. Quite yes. nice. Better than you expect. And then you're pouring again. Yeah, and then time goes by, and I'm like, oh, yeah, wild turkey or whatever. Pour it again. Oh, oh. Oh, that's good. Yeah, quite yeah. nice. Quite nice. Better than you'd expect. So, the, um, in theory, this brand hit the market in 1994. It was supposedly the second ever single barrel bourbon after Blanton's. Okay. Back, so uh, it, it was on the market. You just got blended whiskey, blended bourbons from yeah. the same distillery, right? Yeah. But, um, a single barrel release, they were the second to do it after a Blanton's. It's a little bit pricey, but it's pretty. I really like the bottle lineup. So, somewhere between eight and nine years old. Yeah, I'm trying to I'm trying to remember. Um, Let's pour the classic. Please, please pour the classic because. How is it different? Yeah, and on this, I'm guessing I'm getting more of a uh, a cherry and vanilla ice cream. Yeah. Like a maraschino cherry mixed with a ice cream type of Type of sweetness on that nose. So these are both 101, right? So that's actually helpful. Oh yeah. As a comparison. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this actually does have that little bit more of the vanilla ice cream, maraschino cherry. Yeah, the sugars are more dense in this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, this, this one's a little bit brighter and the wood notes uh, yep. creep out. Yep, yep, yep. But in this one, it's a denser sweetness. Now, they're not, you know, distant family members. No, they're, they're 10, 20 percent difference. Yeah. In the nose. In at that. least first cousins, if not brothers and sisters here. Very, very closely related. Oh. Yeah, I like that. That's a real brown sugar switching into a little spike of barrel sour. Yeah, right on the, right on the, ramps up on the end. Yeah. Barrel uh, sour. Fingers and vanilla. Uh, I'm getting more um, cherry and, and uh, red apple. Huh. On that finish. On a finish? Yeah. But the honey throughout that, the honey through the body, and the, okay, and then of course you gotta have you gotta have that um, that dose of brown sugar, man. So it continues the sprinkling compared to the 101 Wild Turkey, the 101 Wild Turkey Classic is just a little bit thinner and brighter mm -hmm. and a little more metallic, but has all the same characteristics. And this one's just a far more focused, dense it, experience. It does feel like a more concentrated vanilla, more concentrated cherry, more concentrated honey. It's the same thing. It's just like here's the here's the pipeline of flavors, and on the the barrel one, it just squeezes those together. Yep, exactly. And it's it's not less flavor; it's just more concentrated flavor. It's more pulled together. Now I don't know that this tastes double as good. Oh, is it double? And it's price? almost double the price. Uh, not quite, but okay, okay. I think it's an interesting little little dalliance and experiment. I said dalliance to the second week in a row. I know you're really into dalliance. I know. I just need to. I need to. I hope, I hope Brandy's not watching this show. She's my dalliance. Oh, she's the dalliance. Okay. Yeah. Did you look that up and confirm what dalliance meant? No. I looked it up and confirmed. It's what I thought. Yeah. It's like a flirtation. Yeah. Yeah. Tim uh, Sholopov. Tim Sholopov, you magnificent bastard. J.H. Cutter, so this is cool. This is, uh, back in the day we reviewed this. These are the guys who make an old Petrero. Okay. Right, Anchor? Yeah. Um, now remember, Anchor was the famous brewing company in California. Okay, right? so I'm, I got it. I'm saying, Anchor okay, beer? I'm saying, okay, yeah, I'm nodding. I don't remember the Petrero. I don't remember the Anchor. Petrero was the malted rye. It looks like a little pot still looking bottle, kind of cool. Okay. We actually liked it, if I remember correctly. Sure. Um, anyway, when Anchor sold they uh, to Sapporo, the Sapporo only bought the beer company. The spirit company, Anchor Distilling, 
uh, stayed on their own. And this is one of their spirits named after a famous whiskey or spirits dealer in the 1800s in San Francisco. Like a, the maltiness is for real. It's like a little bit of sweet tea on that maltiness. Wait, there was that really like sugared green tea. Sugared green tea? You're getting yeah. sugar. At the green very tea? end, it got this note of green tea. Okay. So this is. I'm saying uh, maltiness, sweet tea, and some f little bit of fresh hay. I love the idea of this. So they're blending a whiskey, right? Yeah. That's why this is a perfect blend of American whiskeys. So it is. You ready? Mm hmm. 73% bourbon from Kentucky Bourbon Distillers, four and a half years old. Okay. 17% Old Potrero, old 18th century rye. Okay. 10% Old Potrero port finished rye. The port. youngest whiskey is three and a quarter. Port finished rye. Yeah, so ah. it's 73% it's bourbon, 27% rye. Okay, and then that rye is split up between two different kinds. Yeah, the two different kinds of rye and the bourbon is whatever the mash bill from Kentucky bourbon is. Okay, okay. So I'm a, it, this is probably predominantly bourbon. I love the nose on I, this. I really like the nose, yeah. but, but it, with that much of it being bourbon, I want to talk about the classic bourbon nuts I'm not getting. No, not getting any of the weird brown sugars, getting way more of the honeyed green tea. I'm not getting a barrel heavy no. presentation at all. There's a really kind of round can hard candy note in the nose. Mm hmm Wow, this smells, this smells fantastic. Yeah, it's lovely. It's lovely. I like the bottle too. I like the cork. He likes it. I like it. Timmy likes it. He says before even taking a sip. Oh, I'm gonna double down on oh, that. Oh, me too. I'm gonna double down on that hay note. It tastes like it smells, but it's for me it actually has a little different kind of sweetness. I get a, I get a little bit more of the sweet. Mm, red apple cherry from the bourbon. Uh, I think I get a little bit more of the molasses direction now. Really? Yeah. The molasses? Or maybe not actual molasses, maybe actually like just like pancake syrup, like the corn syrup, you know? Wow, that's really pretty. Mm -hmm. It's um, that spirit, blend is very balanced. It's yeah, it's 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 nicely balanced, and it's a uh, respectful re respectable level of of um, nuance and complexity. Yeah, there's complexity. It yeah. never flattened out. And it never became only one thing. And this is complexity where you're not leaning heavily into just a giant proof and big flavors that are yeah. fighting. This is a relatively, I don't want to say delicate, you know, but a relatively like, light dalliance of flavors. This is, just can't get away from it. This is, uh, <laughs> I like the elbow crook. Uh, this is the kind of complexity we got from McAllen. Mm -hmm. Where it's subdued a little bit. Yeah, yeah. It's calmer. Okay, yeah. It's not a struggle. I see that. But it has complexity. I pick up what you're throwing down. Uh, do we, what's the, is this a very wide note? I don't know, man. Can people get their hands on that? I don't even know. Yeah, it's California. All right, California. Uh, we can do some comments, though. Oh, yeah, that's. We spent a lot of time talking about whiskey on this episode. That's what the same. hell are we doing? Carson Pedraza, tell me why I'm pregnant, missing my bourbon, and binging your channel, which I discovered two days ago. Nonstop. This is just torture. <laughs> but now I have some new bourbons to try in four months. Yeah. Yeah, well. Here's to four months. Yeah, right? <laughs> uh, and congratulations, by Yes, the way. yes, congratulations. Um, in four months. Here's to fighting, uh, stealing, and drinking. Uh, you fight me, fight for a friend. You steal, may you steal, ever sorry. And if you drink, may you drink with us. <laughs> <laughs> hey, thanks for hanging out with us in the Whiskey Vault. Don't forget to throw on a like, hit that subscribe button on the bottom right, and drop a question or comment down below.